Archery Unleashed and I'm back for another bow review. This one is one that I have been so excited about. In fact, I wanted to review this bow so bad that I drove 166 miles to get my hands on it and I definitely don't regret it. Today we are going to talk about the Eva Shockey Gen 2. It is the brand new women's bow for Bowtech this year. It is a flagship woman's bow. Let's start out by talking a little bit about the Gen 1. This summer I was looking at upgrading bows and so of course initially I went to look at all of the current women's bows on the market and when I looked up the specs for the Eva Shockey Gen 1, I was super excited about it. On paper it looked fantastic and I expected to walk in, try it and buy it and I was actually really disappointed. So let's compare the two bows, the Gen 1 and the Gen 2, and let's see how they have modified this new version. Now I'm not saying that the old version wasn't a great bow. There are so many women who shoot it and love it, and I think that that's great. I will always tell you that a bow choice is very, very personal. So the Gen 1, is 31 and a half inches axle to axle in comparison to the Gen 2, which is 30 inches axle to axle. So they've shortened up that riser just a little bit. The brace height of the Gen 1 was 6.12, whereas the brace height of the Gen 2 is 7. So they've given you a little more stability and um, a little bit more forgiveness in that brace height. So that's lengthened out about three quarters of an inch. The IBO speeds are pretty comparable. The Gen 1 is actually rated a little bit faster. I'm not exactly sure at what draw weight or draw length they were measuring the Gen 1s at, but it is rated at 332 feet per second IBO versus 323 feet per second on the new Eva Shockey Gen 2. They also narrowed the margin of draw lengths a little bit. So the Gen 1 could go from 22 and a half inches to 28 and a half, whereas the Gen 2 is only 23 and a half to 28 and a half inches. So if you are a really short draw, archer in that 22 and a half to 23 and a half inch range, you may not be able to upgrade to the Gen 2. The other huge change is that they went from carbon on the Gen 1 to an aluminum riser on the Gen 2. Now, talking about that, that may seem like a downgrade, but in my mind, that was a major upgrade. So as I said, I went in, I shot the Gen 1, and I was pretty disappointed, to be honest. Um, I absolutely hated the grip. It felt like I was holding a 2x4 in my hand. The draw was smooth, um, but to be totally honest, I felt like the bow was too light. It didn't settle well in my hand. It didn't settle well on the target, and it just, it, it really felt like it was too light, and I walked out really disappointed. So when we're talking about the carbon versus the aluminum, I was so excited when I saw the weight of this new Gen 2. It's 3.9 pounds. It is not a heavy bow. It's incredibly light, especially for an aluminum riser bow, but it is perfect in the hand. Both the Gen 1 and the Gen 2 have an 80% let off. Um, it was a little difficult to scratch up that information. It's not listed anywhere on Bowtech's website, but I did actually call them today about the Gen 2, and they told me that it is an 80% let off. Um, the cool thing about this Gen 2 is they have integrated their deadlock cam system that makes this bow so adjustable. It is amazing the things that you can do with this bow with just an allen key which really takes some of the complexity out the other bow companies haven't quite done yet where you can adjust this bow super simply you don't even need a bow press for a lot of those adjustments 
And that's kind of game changing for a lot of people. I kind of ran through the specs really quick in comparison to the Gen 1. But let's just go straight through the Gen 2 specs because that may have been a little bit confusing. So the Gen 2 is a 30 inch axle to axle. It has a seven inch brace height. It comes in 40, 50, or 60 pound limbs. You can get it for draw lengths from 23 and a half to 28 and a half inches. And its IBO speed rating is 323 feet per second with an 80% let off. It comes with Botex deadlock cam system which gives you that adjustability. So if you are paper tuning your bow and making adjustments to the flight of your arrow, you no longer have to go in and twist strings and put it in a bow press and make all of those changes. With this dead lock cam system that Bowtech has patented, you can actually use your Allen key that adjusts those cams left or right to perfectly paper tune the flight of your arrow so that all of your speed is directly behind that arrow. And it's really such a cool technology. It's awesome. It also has the Bowtech dead lock limb pockets, which locks in every component of that bow for consistency and reliability. Bowtech also does a really cool thing with their cable containment system. So the cable guard, roller guard, is actually flexible, which reduces torque and gives you more reliability shot for shot. Like I said, I hated the grip on the Gen 1, but they totally reconfigured their grip on this Gen 2, and it feels so good in your hand. It actually comes with two different options. There's a clutch grip, which comes standard with the bow, or you can buy separately a clutch control grip, which is a little less flush, um, gives you a little bit more contouring, and so you would just have to decide which you prefer. I honestly felt like it was fantastic stock. I really liked the clutch grip. They've narrowed it down, it fits fantastic in your hand, and the bow just sits super solid. Bowtech also uses something called Orbit Dampeners, and they are round discs that both absorb shock and offset weight of your accessories. So they're dual functioning and this bow is seriously dead in your hand when you shoot it. It comes in a variety of colors. One thing that I haven't been as impressed with Bowtech is that they don't have as many color options as maybe some of the other companies, especially the high-end top tier bow companies. And that's kind of the case on this Shaki Gen 2. They have added colors that were not available on the Gen 1, so there are a few more than you could get before, but there's not nearly as much variety as you may get out of some of the other high-end women's bows. So it comes in black, which is almost a charcoal. It's not a glossy black. A smoke gray, which I absolutely love. I think it's beautiful. They have a flat dark earth, which is kind of a tan. It's really pretty. And they have the mossy oak breakup country, which is your camo color. It's not my favorite camo that I see, but there is the camo option. So for those of you who are avid hunters and want a camo bow, it definitely comes with that as an option. Now that we've covered the specs, let's talk a little bit about shootability. I was really worried that I was gonna walk in and have the same experience I had with the Gen 1. On paper, this Gen 2 looks amazing. And I was really worried that I was gonna walk in and not like it. And I walked in and I really liked it. It has a really smooth draw cycle, although it's not as smooth as the other competing women's bows that I've shot recently. Um, having said that, it's a very smooth draw, but in comparison, I would say that both the Prima and the Eclipse have a slightly smoother draw cycle. Bowtech is saying that this is their smoothest drawing bow to date. And I haven't shot a lot of Bowtech, so it wasn't something to complain about. I'm just 
giving you the information that it's not as smooth as a couple of the other high-end women's bows that have recently come out. Um, it has a relatively short valley on the comfort setting. Now, I didn't shoot it on performance and I am planning to do that really soon because I tend to like a little bit more aggressive bow. For those of you who haven't seen our other videos, I'm currently shooting the Hoyt Eclipse, which is a fairly aggressive draw cycle and I kind of like that. Um, my Eclipse draw cycle is smoother than this draw cycle um, and my Eclipse doesn't have much of a valley, if a valley at all. Having said that, the Gen 2 has a smooth draw cycle. You have a really short valley right before you get to the back wall, but that back wall is solid. Um, and the let off is fantastic. I could have held that bow indefinitely. It really felt so good in my hand and the balance was unlike anything that I have ever experienced. The Eva Shockey Gen 2 has fantastic balance. It sets perfectly in your hand. I was so impressed. In fact, for a couple of days after shooting it, I just kept thinking about how well that bow held in my hand. So that is one of my high accolades to Bowtech because they really nailed it on stability. The release, there's a very, very little vibration. It was a super rock solid. When Lancaster says it's dead in your hand, they are being completely honest. It was just a really phenomenal shot. It is also relatively quiet. I would say that it's comparable to any of the other bows out there. Uh, Matthews might have been a little bit quieter than this bow is. So if that is a big deal to you, then um, that's something to consider, but it is a quiet bow for sure. Due to them changing from a carbon to this new aluminum riser, the weight is fantastic. I'm sure that that really contributes to the balance and hold that this new bow has versus the Gen 1. And I would say that Bowtech really nailed it on changing over from that carbon to the aluminum because this bow is a steady bow. As far as appearance goes, I think that this bow is beautiful and everything's personal opinion, but Bowtech really nailed it on appearance. I, the, one of the other things I really did not like about the Eva Shockey Gen 1 was the colored cams. So they've switched out the cams from being that uh, Eva Shockey blue to a silver gray and it makes a world of a difference in my opinion. I really, really like what they've done. You still have those Eva Shockey blue accent colors. The string is a Eva Shockey blue wrapped with a gray, at least it was on the one I shot. So you just have those hints of blue. You've got a little bit of the blue on the top. Um, you've got a little bit of blue on those dampeners, but overall it is such a pretty bow. And while appearance shouldn't matter, it sometimes really does. And to me, as a designer, I really like things to look nice. I'm gonna insert some footage of me shooting the bow so that you can see for yourself what the hand shock looked like, what my draw cycle looked like. Um, I shot this bow over and over and over again. I probably shot 20 to 30 arrows through this bow. How you like that? said my one hang up was kind of the draw cycle because it felt different than my current bow and part of that is because my current bow is fairly aggressive the on the comfort setting this bow is really really well done um but it's not as aggressive feeling as my current bow the other thing that was a little bit different that 
I am excited to show this again with my own components um, is that I was shooting it with a whisker biscuit with range arrows at the shop that I was shooting at and the range arrows were gigantic diameter arrows. I'm used to shooting micro shafts and I was shooting a whisker biscuit and the whisker biscuit wasn't quite big enough for those huge arrows and so it just it gave a funny feel I think to the draw a little bit which probably impacted my feelings about that draw cycle a little bit too. I had someone on social media ask me after I said that I had shot this bow which I would purchase. Would I still purchase the Hoyt or would I purchase the Eva Shockey? And my answer is both. Uh, the Hoyt has a super smooth draw cycle. There's some really great things about it. There's some really great things about the Eva Shockey. I don't feel like there is a perfect bow out there, but this bow is really close. I'm going to be doing a comparison of all three of the top of the line women's bows that have just come out. So I am going to do the Hoyt Eclipse, the Matthews Prima, and this Eva Shockey Gen 2. That's going to be coming next week, so watch for that. I will break down specs for each bow, the differences, as well as how each bow would rate in several categories, such as speed, balance, shootability, grit, draw cycle, and then I will lay it all out there for you. As I said in all of my videos, I am a non-brand specific human. We own almost every brand of bow in this home, and it's because bows are so individual. You choose a bow based on your finances, based on what your preferences are, based on what your priorities are, when you are shooting, what you're using it for. So there's not a perfect bow out there. For, so for you to ask me what bow you should buy, I can't give you that information. I can't tell you the right bow to buy. I can tell you where you're gonna get the strengths and the weaknesses in each bow and then you can make the decision for yourself. Overall, the Eva Shockey Gen 2 is a phenomenal bow. I don't think you could go wrong in purchasing this bow. You have speed, they fixed the weight and the grip, the appearance is fantastic, it has a really great comfortable draw cycle, and the adjustability is beyond what anything else on the market has right now. You don't have to order specific mods for your draw length, you do have to figure out your limbs and draw weight. So they only get about a 10, maybe 12 pound range. So if you buy 50 pound limbs, that's going to be the top end and you're going to get maybe 38 out of that limb. Um, so a range from 38 to 50. So that's something to consider. That's the same with pretty much any other women's bow in this category. But with this Eva Shockey Gen 2, you get the flip disc technology, which allows you to flip a simple module from one side to the other to adjust whether you want an aggressive draw cycle that is gonna increase your power and your speed, or you can flip to the comfort setting, which gives you a smoother, a slightly smoother draw cycle. It may reduce your speed a little bit, but you're essentially getting two bows in one. And then you have the adjustability and tunability of those deadlock cams that you just can't get anywhere else. I personally, and even my husband, can't adjust our other bows with just an Allen key. And you can't do it without a bow press. Where this bow, you have so much flexibility that if you need to adjust on the fly. You have that ability, but it also locks in so that you have that reliability shot after shot. I was really, really impressed with this bow. I really love it. Um, it's not perfect, but no bow is going to be perfect. You have such incredible balance stability in your hand. It's lightweight, but it also has enough weight to give it that dead in the hand feel, really low vibration, really quiet functionality. It's just, it really is a good bow. I would highly recommend going out and giving it a shot. 
I hope that you have enjoyed this video. If you have any questions for me at all or comments, please um, drop them in the comments section. Follow us on social media at Epic Archery Unleashed. We love to help people out there and we are constantly putting out new content that pertains to women's specific gear and we also are very family oriented. So it's not just about women on our page. We are here to help you with any of your archery questions or needs. If we don't know the answer, we will find it out for you. I really appreciate you watching. I hope this has been helpful. How you like that? Cycle's not as smooth, but zero hand shock. What about weight? Oh. The weight of the bow is not bad. Everything feels pretty good. Would I buy the Eva Shockey Gen 2? I may have.